so I may have read all 847 pages of a webcomic called You Plus Me Dream by Megan Rose Gedris all in one sitting. Oops. Except not oops because it's wonderful. I'm going to try to keep my emotions calm and my spoilers to a minimum in this review because this is the kind of story that you enjoy more the less you know about it. is split up in between two parts, I am going to talk about the two major elements, art and plot. When you start reading this comic, the art is obviously the first thing that catches your eye. Now I adore Megan Rose, but I think even she would agree with me that at the beginning the art isn't terrible, but it definitely isn't great. She started this comic right after high school, and the comic lasted for six years, so you know from the first page that it's going to get better. However, keeping that in mind, the art style goes so well with the plot. It's so great and ingenious, and is just so good. <laughs> the way that the art mimics what is happening in the plot. The art is boring and a bit juvenile in the beginning, but it increasingly gets better and better until finally a few pages before the end of Act 1, the art is really good. Like it's still flat and detailless, but it's still something that doesn't take me out of the story. And then Act 2 happens, and holy shit. You can tell that the art style in Part 1 was chosen for a reason. Because man, oh man, can she draw, and photograph, and sculpt. The art is just crazy good and every single page is a masterpiece. Every few pages she tries out a new art style, mostly to show point of view or flashbacks or setting. Guys, it's just, it's so good. It's so crazy, crazy good. Now, I said earlier that the plot and the art style go hand in hand, and that she chose the boring average artwork from part one for a reason. That's because the plot goes as such. Fiona would rather dream her life away by sleeping than live her reality where she doesn't really have any friends. Her stepmother doesn't particularly like her, her dad's always away, and she goes to a Catholic school where she thinks the nuns and the popular kids are out to get her. Then one day she meets a boy who doesn't totally hate her, and he essentially becomes her gay best friend. Then a new girl comes into town, and Fiona and Leah instantly hit it off. Of course, Having friends doesn't stop her from getting detention every single day. Eventually, Fiona starts questioning her sexuality and falls for Leah and flash forward a few chapters, they kiss. Now they must keep the relationship a secret from those around them. It is basically a typical high school lesbian story. During all this, Fiona's godfather is trying to contact her to tell her how exactly her mother died. But despite this, it's still your typical coming out story, which explains the average artwork. However, at the end of part one, when the art starts to get really good, the plot starts to get crazy good. And I mean crazy, like totally flippin' insane, major cray-cray up in here. I mean completely and totally sci-fi, fantasy, crazy mind-blowingness. I'm not gonna tell you what happens because one of the reasons I really enjoyed this story is because of the shift from normal to paranormal. The author says in the beginning that the art and the plot is going to get better. She's for serious. The supporting characters are great. They're just quirky enough to be interesting and they all have some kind of ingenious backstory. The two main characters are a bit unrealistic. Fiona is a bit of a Mary Sue in the way that no one likes her, all the girls pick on her, the nuns give her detention. She doesn't really question all of the crazy stuff that happens in part two, like she just kind of goes with it. And it is something that I definitely would not just go with. <laughs> 
Leah just has way too much going on. Her backstory is so complicated. For those of you who have read it, and for those of you who haven't, this won't be a spoiler, but the Mara plotline is just so unnecessary. There's no reason for that. I mean, it adds more conflict, but why? Why? That, that doesn't need to be in there. I do enjoy that each character has a backstory. However, some of them are a bit too convoluted. This comic was really spot on tackling big issues. For example, in part one, I was a bit thrown off by how the one and only black female character, how she dressed and talked and acted, it seemed very stereotypical. However, in part two, we find out that some of the other characters kind of forced her to act like that because they thought that white people think that black people only talk a certain way, and it was very insightful on our culture, I think. She handles it so well, like, it is so well written. She also broke gay stereotypes and trans stereotypes and just a lot of stereotypes were broken in this comic and a lot of issues were brought to the surface and kind of discussed and that was really nice. Basically what I'm saying is if you start the series, keep reading. Finish it. I hate saying that part two gets better because part one was such a great setup for the sudden shift in part two. There's so many clues and hints in part one that when you get to part two, it just makes part one even better. So I gave volumes one through three, three stars, and four through six, five stars. And the whole thing, which you can read online for free, I gave 4.5 stars. That's all I have for you guys today. Let me know if you read this or any other queer web comics I could look into. That would be really awesome. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.